Chapter 10 Old Man Jack had not slept much. He stared out his window most of the night, wondering what would result from his impulsive decision to let Nick escape with the beans. He felt groggy as he wandered downstairs, still in his sleeping robe. The little girl was alone in the dining hall, nibbling on a piece of toasted bread with honey. Whenever Jack saw her, the same thought crossed his mind. How sad that she'd lost her mother the year before, and how fortunate that she had a father as fine as gentle Henry. "'Miss your dad, Anne?' he asked, taking the chair opposite her. She nodded without looking. "'He should be home by tomorrow morning,' Jack said. "'And think how happy those children will be when they get those fine books.' Jack's servant Mary brought a plate of bread and a mug of ale to the table. It was the first thing she did for him every morning. He thanked her, and she returned to the kitchen. Something else was on the little girl's mind. Master Jack, what happened to the boy you caught in your painting room last night? Ah, the little thief. I sent him away. Did you punish him first? No. But why not? Didn't you want to teach him a lesson? The old man took a long sip from his mug. Maybe it's better if he learns it for himself. Anne scrunched her face, which she always did when she was confused. Then her expression brightened and she changed the subject. I thought about it, like you said. Eh? Thought about what? If it was all right for you to steal from the giant. Oh, that. And what do you think? Jack watched the girl's face carefully. Well, the giant was awful, and he didn't deserve those treasures. But you're a good man, so I think it was all right for you to take them. She beamed at Jack. The old man hung his head. Somehow he had to make the girl understand. She reached out and put her hand on his arm. What's wrong, Master Jack? Why are you sad all the time? Jack kept his head down. A chill swept through him, and he pushed the mug away and clasped his hands. And imagine a little boy who lifts something very heavy and puts it on his shoulders. And for the rest of his life, wherever he goes, that burden is always with him. He grows to be a young man, then a grown man, then an old man, and all the while it's there. And the older he gets, the wearier he becomes, until he can barely stand to carry it any more. I'm sad because I have a burden like that, Anne. But it's the kind of burden you can't see. You just feel it. Anne's eyes brimmed with tears. Did I give the wrong answer? Jack sighed. It's complicated. Let's talk about that. Another voice interrupted them. Master Jack! It was Henry standing at the kitchen entrance. Father! Anne ran over to Henry, and he scooped her up and hugged her tightly. He held his daughter for a while, rocking from side to side, before putting her down and brushing his hand through her hair, tucking it behind her ear on one side. Run along now, Annie, Henry said, trying to sound cheery but failing. Father has to talk to Master Jack. I'll find you in a moment. Jack waited for Anne to leave before speaking. Henry, what happened? You're as pale as the moon. Why are you back so quickly? Henry could scarcely get the words out as emotion overcame him. Thieves on the forest road. Thought they were going to murder me. Lost the books. Afraid to come back that way. Rode all the way around the forest to get back and warn you. Calm down, Henry. Sit at the table, Jack said. He called to the kitchen. Mary, fetch an ale for Henry. Jack coaxed the story from his servant. He was sure the boy in the forest, whose intervention had saved Henry's life, must be Nick. Was that child really a member of the cutthroat gang Henry described? Then what was he up to last night? Had he entered the fortress to let the others in? Daddy? Anne was at the door again. Darling, I told you, I have to talk to Master Jack. You mustn't interrupt. But you have to come see the big cloud. Anne, Henry stood to reprimand the child, but stopped when he saw Jack bolt out of his chair and stride to the girl. What sort of cloud? asked Jack. His knees cracked as he knelt to hold the girl by her shoulders. 
A big, black, scary one. Come to the roof and I'll show you. Moments later, they stood on the roof. The oppressive cloud hung like a dark ceiling over most of the visible world. Rivers of lightning crackled across its belly. You haven't changed, Jack whispered. Anne was bouncing on her toes. See how big and dark it is? There's going to be a storm. I know it. Father, can we stay and watch? What on earth, Henry said. He was looking east where the cloud ended. What? Tell me what you see right now, Jack demanded with sudden urgency, grabbing Henry's arm. My sight is not as keen as yours. Beyond the forest? Over the ridge? It looks like... It can't be. It's a thin green line reaching from the ground to the cloud. What is that thing? It's almost like the beanstalk from your sto- Henry looked at Jack. From your story? Jack looked back at his servant, nodding. Tell Bill and Roland to load the cart and prepare fresh horses. I want you to come with us as well if you're up to it. And all of you should be armed, he said, thinking about the ruffians who had intercepted Henry. Henry's eyebrows arched high. He was 26 years old, the son of a servant, and he had lived with Jack his entire life. Never once had he seen the old man venture outside the fortress walls. Master Jack, what's happening? Anne asked. She stood with her hands on the top of the wall, a gentle breeze rippling through her white robe and her black hair. She gazed dreamily at the magical thread of green in the distance. Jack thought for a while before answering, a long time ago, a boy climbed a beanstalk and he came down a thief. Now a thief is climbing a beanstalk, and who knows what will come down.